Hello, welcome to my channel, Doll Talks from a Short Lady. In this video, I'm going to be talking about adjustment letters. So, what is an adjustment letter? Anytime a customer is unhappy about a product or a service, he or she writes a complaint letter to the company, which is also better known as a claim letter. Now, any company worth its salt is duty-bound to send a response to the customer and this response is known as an adjustment letter. You will notice that I've used the character of red from the Angry Birds to represent an irate customer, whereas Matilda on the right-hand side is the epitome of a well-trained customer service executive who never loses her temper, who never accuses the customer of any wrongdoing, and most importantly, who knows how to treat the customer as king. So, an adjustment letter is more than just a formal letter. It is in fact a legal document and it records the fact that a claim has been received. Secondly, it records the decisions made by the company regarding the claim of the customer, and most importantly, it serves as record of the actions taken by the company to redress the complaint or the issue. So, there are three types of adjustment letters. First, we have the full adjustment letter where 100% of the customer's claims are met. Next, we have the no adjustment letter, which is on the other end of the spectrum and where not a single of the customer's claim is met. Then we have the partial adjustment letter, which is a middle ground where the company and the customer, they come to an understanding and they settle for something where both companies are somewhat happy. This is the partial adjustment letter. Now I will take a look at a very poorly written adjustment letter. First, I will read it out to you and then I'll discuss the facts or features which make this letter a very poorly written one. We cannot comply with your claim for an adjustment on the camera you have purchased from us. In rejecting your request, we want to emphasize that we never make adjustments on merchandise after the customer has kept it for three days. You state that the camera was marred when it reached you, but our final inspection showed it was in good condition when we sent it. Unfortunately, our policy prohibits us making any adjustments in this case. So let us take the first thing that makes this letter a poor one is where they say or they start the letter with a very very negative tone by using the word cannot. We cannot comply with your claim. The very first sentence will raise the huckles of the customer, will alienate him. Next thing you are adding you know injury to insult by emphasizing why you are refusing the adjustment. Next, look at what the writer is saying. Our final inspection showed it was in good condition when we send it, which implies that they are not believing the customer's claim. This is the worst that you can do uh, by, you know, um, by making a statement to prove that the customer is in fact lying. And the last thing, look at again the very, very negative ending and the use of strong words, negative words like prohibits us making any adjustment. So this is a sure shot way of losing your customer and one alienated customer leads to 50 lost customer, potential customers, because this customer is now going to go and tell 50 other people never to avail of the services of this company. So let us Look at the four steps to writing a good full adjustment letter. The first step is give the good news. Don't beat around the bush, just go straight to the point and tell them the happy news. Next, give an explanation why the customer faced the problem and also proffer a thank you because the customer's feedback or claim helped you to improve the mistakes or problems in your product or service. Third thing, you must emphasize the efforts of the company to prevent any future problems. Talk about the R&D you have done, talk about the steps you've taken so that such problems will not be faced either by this customer or any other customer. 
And last, the most important is that you must resell your product, service, organization and leave the customer in a very good frame of mind so that, you know, they forget about this little problem that occurred. So let us take a look at a very good full adjustment letter. Your new patio umbrella is being mailed prepaid today. It should arrive in a few days time. This first paragraph takes care of step one where you're giving the good news. The second para takes care of step two and three where you are thanking the customer and talking about what steps you have taken so that the same problem will not occur again. Thank you for returning the tone one because amended umbrella might not be water resistant, we are sending you a new one so that you can keep your new patio table protected. You will notice that the new patio umbrella is made of vinyl coated nylon, which has proved superior to the polyester and cotton one you bought last year. The third paragraph talks about how the company is trying to resell some of its products and leaving the customer in a good frame of mind. When you need new patio furniture and accessories, you will find everything from small tables to fountains in our latest catalog. You can rely on our guarantee of high quality and satisfaction or your money back. Look how pleasantly it ends the letter and leaves the customer in a very, very happy frame of mind. Now, moving on, I'm going to be looking at the no adjustment letter and I'll start with the objectives of a no adjustment letter. Now, the no adjustment letter is the most difficult one to write because first of all, you have to say no to the customer's claim. And the second thing is that you have to retain the customer even after giving him the bad news that you are not agreeing to give any of his claims in terms of adjustment. So what are the four steps to a no adjustment letter? First of all, you have to give a buffer. Now, a buffer is anything that absorbs the impact of something. For example, when you see, uh, you know, sportsmen doing pole vault, there is a thick mattress on the other side so that when the sports person falls on it, the impact of the landing is absorbed by the thick mattress. So the first step in a no adjustment letter is to use a buffer and this you can do by empathizing with the customer's problems. Step two. Assure that the customer's claim has been given individual attention. Step three, present the explanation and then the implied no. Please make sure that the explanation comes first why you can't give the adjustment and try to remember what we learned in the seven C's where we spoke about consideration and where we spoke about giving negative views without using any negative word. So you imply the no, but you never ever actually use any negative word. And then the last step is to provide another buffer to take the impact of the bad news. And you try and leave the customer in a pleasant frame of mind. Maybe not very happy, but at least pleasant so that you don't lose the customer. So uh, let us look at a good, well-written no adjustment letter. We are sorry that you've missed your favorite TV programs these two days because of the poor reception of the TV you bought from us six months ago. So this is step one taken care of where you're empathizing with the problems of the customer. Now, step two and three will be taken care of in the second paragraph. Our mechanic has examined the TV set and found that it has been opened and some parts have been replaced. The replaced parts are not of the standard quality and the repair work seems to have been done inexpertly. It is true that our TV sets are guaranteed for five years against defective material or workmanship, but the guarantee ceases to be valid if unauthorized persons have repaired the TV set. So they're giving the explanation why they're refusing the adjustment, but they're also implying a no without actually using the word no. Next, what are they doing to leave the customer in a happy frame of mind? Let's look at uh, the last paragraph. We shall repair your TV set and replace the parts which have been changed. The cost of the parts will be $200. It will take only one hour to complete the repair work. 
after the repair work, your TV will be as good as new without giving you any further trouble. So even though the letter has no good news to give, the ending is very, very well written. It does not make the customer angrier than he is. Okay. And it also, uh, you know, tells what they can do instead of focusing on what they can't do for the customer. So moving on to the last kind of adjustment letter, which is uh, the partial adjustment letter. Now, the partial adjustment letter has five steps because there's just one step which is extra. The technique to write a partial adjustment letter is exactly the same as a no adjustment letter, except for that uh, one step, which is additional. So let us go through the steps. Step one is you empathize with the customer. Step two, you give the explanation of why you are going to say a no. Then you imply the no. Now, the step four is the one which is slightly different. This is where you offer a counter proposal to the uh, customer and come to a middle ground. And again, step five is the same where you use a buffer to close uh, the letter and leave the customer in a pleasant frame of mind. So now that we've looked at the five steps, let us look at the good partial adjustment letter. We are sorry to learn from your letter of May 20th, 2021, that four of the wall clocks in our shipment of May 5 were received in a damaged condition. So here you're looking at the buffer uh, paragraph where you're empathizing with the problem of the customer. Ordinarily, we should replace any goods which a customer has received in damaged condition. However, claims for damaged goods have to be made within seven days of the receipt of the shipment. When claims are made within seven days, we can make a counterclaim on the transport company, which is in most cases responsible for the damage. So they're giving an explanation why they cannot comply with the customer's request and they're also implying a no. Now, the writer is going ahead and saying what they can do for the customer. Instead, this is the counter proposal. However, in your case, we shall be glad to make the required repairs, charging you only 50% of the cost of repairs. Our representative will collect the damaged clocks from your office this week. So this is where, you know, they're coming to a negotiation and understanding. This is the last paragraph where there is an ending buffer. We are sorry that you are inconvenienced. We assure you the clocks will be put in first class condition again. This is again a very, very positive closing. That is all I have from my side in terms of adjustment letter. For other topics on communication, please refer to the description box below this video. And the name of my channel is Tall Talks from a Shop Lady. And with that, I will say thank you and bye.